cut your way in, weld your way out. So. Oh, my! You just open. It's a four inch lift on 35. That's definitely more than a four-inch. This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, yes! Oh, sweet. Oh, that's what? Oh. Engine lights on. Was that always? <laughs> <laughs> issue. Car won't start. <laughs> I'm not even going to test it. It's going to go. Welcome to the Outback Equipment $5,000 budget build challenge. This is what we've created. I think we're in with a chance, although it doesn't really drive at the moment. <laughs> we do. We've got an issue. Currently, we don't have it in the bag. It's in a bit of limp mode. We're, we're hopeful. A few important rules for this challenge, because obviously you can get pretty good four-wheel drives for under $5,000. So the rules were no Toyotas, no mm. patrols. Oh, mm. All of a sudden, it gets real tricky, trust me. The official rules were to buy and build for under $5,000 and we have come in under budget, only just. Uh, some last minute problems created some budget blowouts, so. So this is a bit more important than getting it running. Yeah. <laughs> Same as the cut and buffing I did. Yeah, actually Matt, we've been waiting for this part. Matt's just been buffing it and making it look unreal. <laughs> it's actually come up really nice. Looks brand new again. We win these challenges, $5,000 to a charity of our choice. We've chosen Ronald McDonald House Charity and uh, we get bragging rights. Another thing I should mention to make the trip more bearable, we've been given a little bit of a helping hand from a few companies that have jumped on board and help, are gonna help out with this charity budget build challenge, including Red Art. They sorted us out for Go Block. GME with a little budget radio so we can all talk to each other. Very necessary when you're filming these sort of things to have radios. The best in the business max tracks are on the roof. We've also got the recovery kit. That's all they like, basically just help other teams. So yeah, let's be honest. First part of the challenge, we're gonna also get $500 from Super Cheap Auto to go grab as much as we can on the aisles and help with sort of camping equipment and any mechanical things that we may need for this trip. Speaking of teams, I think it's time to introduce who we are up against. And that is, of course, Matt and Berkey from Explore Life, Bree and Bridget from Red Dirt Diary, and Sam and Mitch from Built Not Bought. So we're going in with confidence and hoping for the best. Who are you worried about? Oh, probably Sam, because he can fix stuff. Yeah, and Mitch is a mechanic. Ah, oh, mate, I've got a Mac, so that's all you really need. It's important to run you guys through a bit of a price breakdown to let you know how this was possible. I think the fact that it's still not running is sort of an indicator of how it was so cheap. <laughs> we had nearly given up on trying to find a car, to be honest, eh? Uh, I pulled up at work and I was chatting with uh, one of the labourers on site. He pulled up next to me in this Jeep. He's like, oh, I love it. It's great. It goes like clappers. It doesn't. It will, but it doesn't. He's like, oh, well, this is just our spare car because father-in-law was like 90 and they stopped him driving it. So they knew it needed some love, I think. And he said, I'll ask the wife. So <laughs> hopefully she's not watching this. <laughs> He didn't tell her we were chopping it up and going full driving in it, but so, and that's how we got it. And I was like, sweet, I'll buy it. Happy days, here we go. Good news? Yes! Oh, sweet, all right, we'll load up, we'll come down. Parts in, Bill. Parts are in. Woo, let's go. All right, let's go through it. So, vehicle, $3,000. Steel rims, $520 in total. Tires, $250. You might wonder why they were so cheap. It's because they're very wrecked. They're like they're terrible tires, but they're very aggressive. Automotive parts, spares, grinding discs, sicker flex, stuff to get it actually built. We've whacked in a hundred dollars there. I don't even think it come to that really. A few grinding discs and bolt nuts and bolts and butter. We'll throw a hundred dollars on that. Coils came in at hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, rear coil spacers came in at eighty dollars. Pinch weld to finish off the cuts came in at $80. Cha-ching! So yeah, as you can see, we're under budget. Since I wrote that list, gearbox speed sensor coming in at, what is that? $140. And we also had, what was the other one? Oh, crankshaft sensor. Cam sorry, camshaft sensor. <laughs> like $90 that was. If you didn't have a Mac, a wizard of automotives, and you had to get this diagnosed at a mechanic, that could add up very quickly. But we've managed to keep it under budget only just. We'll redo the total at a total of. We just made it, guys. So we are literally on the way to go pick up this last sensor, gearbox speed sensor, and hopefully 
fingers crossed that we get first gear back. <laughs> Power. Okay, this is the official budget build. That's right. You guys wouldn't understand. It's a Jeep thing. <laughs> it's a Jeep thing. <laughs> what do we got? A WJ. WJ. 2002 or three. <laughs> I don't even know. 4.7 liter <laughs> Hemi. Proper four wheel drive. All time. And we got four low. Got cruise control. <laughs> got a heater that works. So you know the seats are electric as well. Oh. <laughs> They see me rolling. It's shockingly Damn. comfortable. So far, we've purchased a vehicle for $3,000 cash. We have a receipt to prove it. Just gonna take it for a little spin, see where we're going. I had a little roll before. I feel like first gear might need a bit of a touch up. Automatic it is, but. It might just be tranny fluid, might just. We might need some fluids. I don't think it's been serviced for, for a fair while. And then a gate, and then a gate. Like goes from a dead stop still. Yeah, I felt it. For sure. Yeah. But I think I think tranny fluid will help that because that'll help the tilt and talk about a spin up quicker. Moment of truth, this is actually what we need it for. Neutral. Oh low baby. Oh. Whoa! Hey! Hey, she's got some pepper now. Yeah. <laughs> when you turn the So car. when you go into full low, it must lock the center. Okay, we, we're not Jeep guys, so we don't know how these work really. Ah, first gear socket. Yeah, it's peasant. If there's any top speed challenges, I think oh, we've got that I've, sorted. Let's put one in. <laughs> <laughs> one very cool thing we should mention is this. I didn't even realise this, but the WJ Jeep, which is this one, has a solid front axle. If I couldn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. But, solid front axle in the front and rear. Solid axles all around and on coils. Basically got a GQ, mate, with a V8. <laughs> <laughs> you wait forever. It ain't no GQ, my <laughs> You want to see my donk? Let's check out the donk, mate. Oh, my, my cruiser doesn't even have that. <laughs> that is a big motor. That's a fresh battery. That's good. 4.7 litre V8. What did you just open? Yeah, steering fluid's it's a bit later. Probably what that noise was. Give me looks pretty good. Engine oil, what's this? Must be tranny oil. There's a lot of dipsticks going on. I like that because you can fill it up from here. So the exciting thing for us, budget 5,000 in total. We're up to 3,000. The coils are 120. So we've got a little bit of room. We're going to try to decide whether to do throw it into suspension or maybe tyres. Probably just wheels and tyres, I'd say. Yeah, we're pretty big with it. Yeah. So. Carry the one. <laughs> 850. 34 inch. So by my calculations, if we cut an inch off here, <laughs> an inch off here. We can drive it a straight line. <laughs> What's your plans, you reckon? Take stuff off. Take this off. Go on. No sports car, I don't like it. Nah, just hit trees with the bar. <laughs> Screw a radio into the dash, I reckon. Glass cleaner can be good. Some can leave Residues like Windex sometimes leaves like a residue, but it's good that one. This one's good. I've definitely used it before. That's basically the only trick I've got for you putting the banners on, guys, is uh, clean the glass and take your time. Peel back across the sticker, don't peel off away from the window. My tape's on. I'm gonna fold it back. Don't ever rip the backing, you have to cut it, otherwise, paper stuff flies everywhere. <laughs> this side's stuck down. We can peel this side back up because we know our alignment's going to stay good and on a diagonal sort of motion. Okay, and then this peel diagonally as well. And with the car. With. Like other stickers may not be as easy to put on, but what I'm saying is ours the best. <laughs> Very budget. <laughs> <laughs> a bit fuely. Well, very fuely, isn't it? It's, probably... it's a deep thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't understand. <laughs> Today's mission is to try and get the front up a little bit and put these wheels on, but that's, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So this only lifted at 40 mil because these are, so are really soft. Yeah. So 
so they just pretty much compress back. Back to that. Back to that. Because yeah. yeah. can you even compress the stopper? Yeah, but yeah. these are soft. Whereas then we got this. But that doesn't go down bugger all. I don't know. I just don't think they're gonna work. I, I have this. I have full fat. The shots. The shots gonna be just <laughs> topped out. Yeah, but down travel will be amazing. No, up, up travel. travel. <laughs> We've got James come to help this bodybuilder. <laughs> well, he's actually just commentating. That's kind of. What's you gotta do when you're on a budget, eh? Like... Yeah. <laughs> Imagine just buying springs that are correct for the car. A little update. We're a bit worried because this is a four-inch coil for a different vehicle, so it might be a bit too strong a spring rate. Yeah. Just gonna have to try her out and see what goes on. I hate these things. Oh, I hate them, man. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> 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 Lucky had me wet boots on, mate. Yeah, alright, why not? It's gonna destroy the garden. He's just got excited. <laughs> Dude, it's gonna be. You need that lift. Yeah. Thoughts? I like it. <laughs> Still don't have a shot in yet. It's a four inch lift on 35 WJ Jeep. Uh, that's definitely more than a four inch, but it's a tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute monster. <laughs> it's a two, 200 mil, so that's like <laughs> a lot. Oh, okay, catch you up to this point. Basically, we had a bit of trouble getting the right spring, but we've discovered a standard 79 Land Cruiser front coil is of the exact same dimensions that we need, but obviously it's gonna lift the vehicle. And that's what we've done, and it's working well. So we haven't actually tested it yet, but the hope is four inches of the lift coming up in the front. We'll get that mod for later, later, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically as simple as jacking it up, taking the wheel off, two bolts for the shock and you get the uh, diff to drop right down. Spring out, spring in. If you're wondering where Macker is today, he's bloody painting his shed floor. If everyone's wondering why I'm doing it. Because you're bloody an animal. We've done the R&D, you get the uh, cream mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a poxy going off mate, we gotta go. Yeah. Well, now for the fun stuff, let's bolt some 35s on. Now, as you can see, it's not gonna drive yet. Considerable amount of cutting coming up, but we'll make it work, guys. All right, 35s, four inch lift on a Jeep. <laughs> the plan is to follow the body line, sort of cut down here. That's what the Americans do. We've been researching it, and it seems to work pretty well, so fingers crossed. <laughs> What are you trying to do it? 5,000 <laughs> This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, it's got some gnarly stance about it. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's so angry. <laughs> So this guy's running 35s on stock lift. Because <laughs> he's an animal. So uh, if we if we pretty much just follow that that line, line. Then, then you got clearance for those. Or should we come lower? We can come lower. That looks pretty outrageous. Like it doesn't It's a lot of chop. We could just cut back I mean, there and cut back there. Yeah, that could work. And then you're getting a good extra two inches front and rear. Semi maintain this look of the vehicle and we're gaining a lot. Still gaining. 25 mil. Well, that's where we need it mostly. There and there is where we mostly need it. Yeah. This is for up flex. We just don't even need to do a tape line because that's the edge. <laughs> We're going to cut along here, cut along here, and that'll be where two panels meet. So I'm going to have to weld it back up. And then that'll that'll match the front because that's about 25 mil. So yeah, yeah that, yeah. Got to give him his can of beer. Yeah, he held for like an hour. Yeah. Hey, where's Ron Payman? You don't deserve beer for an hour. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to the fun part of the episode, the part where we get to cut the guard for 35s on a Jeep Cherokee, would you believe it? 
basically we're going to try and get these wheels to fit today get it driving you know without scrubbing i think the plan is basically cut the shape we need and we're just going to throw a bit of pinch weld over the edge so it's not sharp obviously apart from that it's pretty simple really because we've got the springs in the front you would have seen before <laughs> Give me an artist's perspective. <laughs> it's really hard to cut a curve with a flat disc. <laughs> if you just, just work it in. Well, I can't use the air work. saw in there. Well, it's it, dodgy. because it's a piece of crap. This is good to get the back skin, so it's, it's obviously double skinned. Oh, that's why you Yeah, so. If you stuff your cut a bit, we've got old flappy wheel over there. It'll just clean it right up, you know? And if you really, really bugger it up, you just, you know, the old saying, cut your way in, weld your way out. So. <laughs> artist. You're an artist, mate. Exactly. We've got some pinch round. You're gonna be on the channel too now. <laughs> Terry. We got Terry getting us some pinch weld. <laughs> just quickly nip down to a rubber shop to grab some pinch weld just to go over the cut edges and it's actually finishing up really well so I'm just, um, that's my job for now. <laughs> Whack that on and it actually finishes it off really nice. Looking good Mac. Yes, Captain Cook. I reckon it, it's finished up nice. Oh, look at that. Professional now. Now there's one thing you forgot. <laughs> to paint the raw edge before you Well, go. I figured this is better than paint. That's like milk. No. I just run a paint pen around the cut edge. Real dodgy and it's white, it's the wrong color, but what do you do? Bit of a sneak peek to the fitment. Plenty of room there. Actually, there's more room than I thought, eh? Oh, that's tidy, man. It's hard to tell on this I think side. we've done a great job. <laughs> Self compliments. I'll just give myself a pat back <laughs> 26 minutes to go. 26 <laughs> minutes to get this finished on the road. So we get, no, we got a, two days. Two days to go. It's not looking good then. Nah, it's not. Pesky work keeps getting in the way. Yeah. See that? Got a job for you. Yes! Try not to screw this one into the dash. Steering wheel? Steering wheel. <laughs> GME, the one radio for me. Challenge. And everyone else in the challenge. <laughs> Thanks, GME. Nah, that's just a basic, basic jobby. One of the old, you know, with the, you gotta have that bit on display. We got a go block going in as well, apparently. Yeah, Red Ark. Red Ark's giving everyone a go block. We're allowed to take our own fridge because Matt wants cold beers and he's making the rules, so. <laughs> Don't mind me, mate. How do I fit 35s with no lift? Like this. Can you do it? Yeah. For a change. <laughs> Manager Mac. Manager Mac sorting out your life. Someone's gonna do it. It was after about 10 minutes. <laughs> Looks that good, eh? Yeah. Yay! Bye -bye. Right, so we've got a fair bit of stuff taken off the car already. Ah, uh, yeah, coming along. Testing's next. It's all together, but yeah. Got it moving. Wheels are on. It's gonna be a bit more adjusting to do. because They're gonna scrub, but so yeah. Out the driveway is the first test. Me, everything is on me, go and back it up. Matter what, 
told you I'ma do me. Why you hating on me? It's not adding up. I do roll like a <laughs> I love this thing. It makes me want to get a Jeep. <laughs> first try. This one. Oh, that was the back scrubbed a little. Oh, I'm about to put some bump stops in. Yeah, the back's gonna need some bump stops. We're gonna hit some speed bumps now. And, um, oh, she's got some body rolls. See, yeah. see what the go is. It's just back. the back. So the back just needs a bump stop, mostly. <laughs> Maybe the wheels, they stick a little bit yeah. like outside the guards. <laughs> I don't, didn't think it was an issue, but it, it might be an issue. All right, we got TJ in the hot seat now. What's your first impression? Oh, the steering is very light. It's way lighter <laughs> than the nav, eh? <laughs> VO power! Wait, that was fun. Oh. Engine lights on. Was that always on? Yeah, it's always been on. It's all part of the experience, an engine light. Oh, it feels it feels like manly. Let's listen to it. Yeah, it's Jeep. Jeep VO power. Jeep thing. I wouldn't understand. Like I've just done a little flexi job to see what the back's doing, and yeah, it's you definitely. Know we could fix this. We could cut this higher. So I'm just parked on the concrete at the moment. Sort of see what the go is. Even that already has gotten more flex than the 79. <laughs> oh, turn it up! Okay, so we sort of anticipated that it probably won't work. It works on flat road, but we're going to put this two inch spacer in the rear. Should lift the rear two inches. And then hopefully, on articulation, the rear wheel will kind of come close to tucking under. If not, we'll do the bump stops. Like, it seems to be a bit of an air leak. I just can't find <laughs> why. Oh, it could be the issue if it's. Got a two inch lift in the rear now. It's actually, to be honest, it's looking a lot more level. Looks a bit better too. So I feel like it's gonna drive better as well. I've done the sicker flex on the guard chop, just so, but water can't get up into the vehicle. I think it's looking pretty good, guys. A few more things to modify. What do you reckon? Two inch lift Woo! in the rear, mate? Oh yeah, probably needed it. Yeah, I was just saying that I think it's better. Mm, the Cali lane was cool, but I probably needed it. Day buddy four. I don't know, some of it. <laughs> Today is radio and we've got dual battery system, which is the go block. I'm pretty pumped about having that in the car. I'm gonna let you do the 12 volt install, TJ. Yeah? Yeah, he gives camera. Don't stuff it up. So I've, I've skipped a step. You take it from the box, you take it out, then you use your hands. You pick it up. <laughs> Stunt. <laughs> Did I do it right, Mac? Uh, yeah, I, I actually think you nailed that one. <laughs> there is a bit more. So we got a, we got an Anderson. That's a 12 volt outlet. I think that focus is a bit on. There we go. Oh no, that's the chart. That's where we charge it. Yeah, well we got. But on this side, yeah, I know what that is. That's a four USB ports, and that is an Anderson. That's actually going to be good for my cameras. And then that's the charger. Yep. And plug straight into the wall so super easy way to put a fridge in your car or anything in your car is it this is the same battery that's actually in my canopy and mac didn't believe me but you mm. used it and it lasted like two three days with your fridge yeah yeah i was impressed because obviously the cruiser doesn't have 12 volt yeah that's the next one i'd just run it off the car during the day when i was driving around swap to the go block at night and It'll smick. So. Yeah, well, you, you actually would get forever if it was charging off the car during the day. Well, yeah, I could have. You can actually plug that into the car as well, and that'll charge while you're driving too. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good. And that was the fastest 12 volt install ever. Meanwhile, I've still got all the bloody Jamin's crap here. As well as the 12 volt, the go block, we're putting in the GME radio today. Obviously, because these are budget built. We don't have the best version on the GME radio. It's just the uh, old school version. Nonetheless, we'll do the trick. So about whack this in now. Where are we mounting the aerial, do you think? It's a little slot and I just went around the, the guard bolt. So I know a lot of people really like to show off their radio systems, but not me, I've hidden it in here. That's okay with me. But I'm just not sure where to put this. I just, you might know, do I go here? Or should I go here? Yeah, that's pretty. Just bang it there. Maybe I'll just hole saw. Yeah. Whoa, well, well, that's where I was gonna put my ninja stars. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Oh, we got power, baby. Yeah, copy, copy. Oh, yeah. Oh, the speaker's in there. Why? I thought it, oh, no. <laughs> what issue, the car won't start. <laughs> oh, it's because it took the battery out. No. No, it's, um. So you scanned it. I scanned it, and you can actually check the 
fault codes through the speedometer, it pops them up, which is pretty cool. It looked to be a camshaft sensor or a crank angle sensor, and I wasn't sure, so I rang our good friend Shane here, who I've paid... Dial, dial mechanic. Dial mechanic, who I've, <laughs> I've paid beer Dear. to just just come and have a quick check. Not yeah. help. Check just, not help, just check and confirm my suspicions, and it is correct. So, <laughs> now we're hoping to get one tomorrow. I googled some stuff. I've been doing it all day. A lot of info about Jeeps. Easiest way to get this camshaft angle sensor out is pull the battery tray out, and I think that was pretty correct. Carbon in oil, that's probably the issue. Well, look at that, the plug's full of oil too, which generally means that O ring's probably gone. Which would explain the oil leak we have. It's really hot. Damn it! Ah! It's hitting all the filters that are sitting in there and spraying out. That wasn't my fault. Oh. Just pull that out of the, the, the mad scientist cupboard. <laughs> Literally, the mad scientist cupboard. <laughs> Shane's just looking, he's not doing anything. Not doing anything, I'm just hands in pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk over to the shelf. Oh, there's the oil filter I needed. <laughs> Verdict is they've put an earth wire to the exhaust. That's weird. The train fluid's caught like, like it just smells burnt. Like it's, <laughs> like it's not good. Doesn't smell like transmission fluid. So that might help our transmission issue. Thanks. Yeah, it doesn't smell right, does it? Do you smell a vision? Look at it. Like that's meant to be like bright red. At least the good part is there's no metal on the magnet, so. Oh, that is a messy job. All right, so a little tip. Undo all the front ones. Just let it tip down and get as much oil as it can out. And when you get to the back, hold, press it up hard, pull your other bolts out, and then just go boom, and you're done. Uh, I just need the apprentice to clean up the oil in aisle six. Uh, that'd be great, thanks, mate. Yeah, that's you, man. Huh. <laughs> All right, we've come down the pro check just to use the hoist and the tools available down here. No, we brought our own tools. Well, actually, we brought our own tools, but we're going to do fluids and like a little bit of a service, and we've decided we're not going to include that in the budget. <laughs> because, well, no one else did. So, I'm not mentioning any names. We heard on the grapevine other teams haven't been including the servicing. So, we're doing oils. One of the reasons this Jeep was cheap is because. We feel because of the transmission, first gear basically doesn't work and we're hoping it's because of the bad oil in the transmission. Possible filter, so we're going to change the filter. Also, which we found out last night, the crankshaft sensor seal was leaking oil into the plug, shorting it out, hence it just turning off randomly. That could have been another factor why the guy that sold it to us just wanted it gone. He was very happy to give it to us for $3,000. It was cheap, but there's stuff to fix. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. What are we doing? Mate? Oh, the filter. This is the filter. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you pray to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first day. You were warned <laughs> and you did it anyway. Picks up pressure and goes through your, your channels. The soul always in control where the oil goes. So if you pick first gear, second gear, whatever, it'll go through and that's what controls the oil pressure controls the water. I thought Gandalf was in there though. <laughs> <laughs> this is a magic box. <laughs> New gas the other one gets pretty well destroyed when you pull it off. Bloody lovely. A bit of last minute sensor relocation. Let's check in. the parts are in. <laughs> Not even going to test it, we're just going to go. So, fingers crossed. We're still going to go to the exhaust shop. <laughs> and then head to Goldie. Drink some beer, watch some Origin, go to the Bronx, like, go Queensland. What do you have, you mad scientist? I, I swear the average person doesn't know how to use this stuff. Pick your car, scan, see what codes come up, delete them, and you're good. Alrighty, as you can see, we're at fat pipes because Mac cannot help himself. Jeep is a V8 means it's going to sound good with an exhaust, so let's start a muffler delete in the rear, put the straight pipe through, a little bit more of a rumble. <laughs> Pretty cool actually. Quick and easy little budget thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
quick. Very quick. This <laughs> is insane. Yeah, okay. Like fluttering. Right. So you put them tail pipes on it, they, they become clapping. Yeah. You got a 2.5, you got a 2.5, 3 in that, mate. 2.5, 3, yeah. Dude, <laughs> that's insane. Before that's said and done, stick around. I will link all the other channels, build episodes down below in my description. They are doing the same version of this episode but on their channel for their ride. So you get to see what everyone's building in detail. And then in the following weeks, we'll have the challenge episodes, which will be the decider to see who gets the grand prize of $5,000 for their charity. And let us know down below in the comments. Do we have a chance? Have you seen the other guys' builds? Do you think they have a chance? You don't have a clue what they've got at the moment. Thanks again to all these sponsors Outback Equipment, Max Tracks, Red Arc, Super Cheap Auto, and GME. We've got all the goodies. I'm excited.